Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We celebrate this Sunday, the fourth Sunday in ordinary time, cultivating all the lessons that Jesus gives to his disciples and to his apostles to live the life that God wants us to live. Let us call to mind our sins, and so ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And on this, the Lord's own day, we give him glory as we say together, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our might and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you, from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert. Where your fathers tempted me, they tested me though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath day Jesus entered the synagogue and taught, the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. There's nothing like a good teacher. I know for myself throughout my years in school, I cherish every one of those teachers that was just so passionate about what they learned that they embodied the information and it almost just seemed to flow off of them without even any words. That's the example of Jesus here today, twice in our Gospel. It says the people were astonished at his teaching because he taught them as one having authority, but not as the scribes. And again, all were amazed at the new teaching with authority. Jesus is authoritative. He's not authoritarian. Authoritative means he believes what he's saying, is able to connect with everybody in front of him in the way that they just need to hear what's being said and everyone is in one accord. He's not authoritarian saying this is the way it is and that's it. An excellent example for all of us, especially us priests, as we try to preach and teach the Word of God every day. This fourth Sunday of In Ordinary Time, our readings identify something important, that there is great strength in weakness. In the Gospel today, we see this man who is possessed by some kind of demon or has a demonic obsession on his life, and he calls out to Jesus, Have you come to destroy us? And putting fear in everyone. Immediately, everybody comes weak. Their weakness is exposed. They're afraid. And Jesus calms them all right down. God is able to do wonders with our weaknesses. Earlier this week, on Monday, we celebrated the conversion of St. Paul. The two most important apostles of our faith are St. Peter and St. Paul. The entire church is built on the foundation that they laid by their blood, sweat, and tears. And it's very interesting with St. Paul that he has his feast day, which was Monday of this past week, 
But we don't just celebrate him. More importantly, we celebrate his conversion. The day is called the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. St. Paul was known as the greatest persecutor of Christians in his day, as the number of Christians were increasing, being the self-righteous Jew that he was. He took great pride in executing and discriminating and persecuting Christians as much as he possibly could. But then came a day when Jesus knocked him off his high horse, quite literally, and said to him, Stop persecuting me. I have a job for you, though. Jesus threw him down into the dirt and then rose him up to make him one of the greatest pillars of the church. Several years ago, right after I graduated college, I was a lay missioner in the country of Guatemala in the city of Chiquimula, very poor place, a lot of violence. And I remember one day I was walking down the street and there used to be these huge trash piles on, on the sidewalk. And as I was walking down the street, I saw this family, a mother and a father and their two young girls, rummaging through a trash pile looking for clothes. And the mother found two matching shoes, high heel black shoes, that they fit her perfectly. And one was missing a strap, the other wasn't. But she lit right up when she put them on. She found a very, what seemed to be a very nice pair of shoes, just the missing strap on the other was the problem. And I stopped to say hello. And as I conversed with the father, I looked into his eyes and I could see a great bitter sweetness. He told me that a couple of years ago he was in the United States, in California, having jobs and sending the money back to his family. But he was discovered not to have his legal documentation, and so he was deported back to his home country of Guatemala. And as I looked into his eyes, even though that was so bittersweet to him, because he certainly knew the difference between poverty and getting out of poverty, something that his family might not ever know. But at the same time, I saw the effect of the loneliness that he went through in his life coming to the United States, not knowing anyone, not being able to speak the language or knowing the culture, not having a support system to help him, to guide him, that resulted in his deportation back to the U.S. But yet, looking at him and his family, they were so happy. He was a failure, but God made something beautiful out of his failure. And so, such is the case with all of us. God is able to use something great out of each and every one of our failures. Two of the greatest saints of our church from the time of Jesus himself are Mary Magdalene and St. Paul. Mary Magdalene is the first person that we know of from Scripture to receive the word of the resurrection with the instruction from the Lord to go and tell his disciples and apostles. A woman who completely made a mess of her life, Jesus rose up to do something great. He made something glorious out of her failure. And then St. Paul, who had so much blood on his hands from persecuting Christians, but yet there was no, there's no other Christian soul in the history of humanity that has ever suffered so great as St. Paul did for the name of Christ. And to bring his name and his goodness and his reality that he is our God to so many people in so many places. He had to fight the Romans. He was arrested, put into prison. He had an apostle of the pen writing to all these people, knowing that his writings would be proclaimed. And ultimately, he was martyred, a martyr's death. So it's a lesson this week, not only the gospel of this Sunday, and the example how Jesus takes authority over the situation, but also in those saints that we admire in our Catholic faith that Jesus can take our failures and make something glorious out of them. And they become cornerstones in his church. They become beautiful windows that illumine his church with light and color. And so this Sunday, we ask Almighty God in this Mass for the grace to have light be poured into our eyes, that we may take our failures and lay them at his feet, and put them into his hands, and let him breathe his Holy Spirit into them, so that they are no longer failures in his eyes, or even in our eyes, 
but they become something glorious to proclaim his name and his glory to the world. Our faith that we profess comes from the Apostles, and so together we profess our faith and our creed as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. So as man for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer to our Heavenly Father all of our prayers. For the Holy Father and all bishops and priests, may they encounter the bountiful blessings of the Spirit as they teach and lead the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, all government officials, May God grant them the courage to make decisions out of love, mercy, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For families in conflict, may the grace of God move in and through them to bring about healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you fill those you call with courage and faith to respond to a life of service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the people of the Catholic parishes of Stoughton, for all those who have died for the souls in purgatory, and for Cheryl Collins, may she know the mercy of God in the kingdom of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Pope Francis has declared this year the year of St. Joseph, and so, as many times as we can, we commemorate St. Joseph and honor him as the patron of the Universal Church. And so I invite you as part of the prayer of the faithful to offer with me to our Heavenly Father the litany of St. Joseph. Please repeat after me, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Jesus hear us. Jesus, Jesus graciously hear us. Jesus graciously hear us. Please respond, have mercy on us. God the Father of heaven. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Please respond, pray for us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Renowned offspring of David. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. chaste guardian of the virgin, pray for us. foster father of the son of God, pray for us. diligent protector of Christ, pray for us. head of the holy family, pray for us. Joseph most just, pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most strong, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, Joseph, most faithful. Pray for us. Mira, a patience. Pray for us. Love for a poverty. Pray for us. Love model of artisans. Pray for us. Glory of home life. Pray for us. 
guardian of virgins, pillar of families, solace of the wretched, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of the Holy Church, Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. He made him Lord of his household and Prince over all of his possessions. Let us pray. O God, in your ineffable providence, you were pleased to choose Blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant, we beg you, that we may be worthy to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And we consecrate our families to the intercession of the Blessed Mother as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all of our prayers as we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the glory of the sacrifice of the Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of your, our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, make holy by the same Spirit this offering that we bring to you, that we have brought to you for consecration, that it may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, with St. James the Apostle, St. Bernadette Soubirou, St. André Besset, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory be yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a word of tremendous thanks to Kathy Rednicki and to Marianne Caldwell and to Robin Zadroni for their wonderful work in making these liturgies for our television so wonderful and beautiful. Thank you. Please know that you and your families are in our prayers daily. And please know that each one of you, especially our most homebound, are in my prayers daily, that the Lord may comfort you always with his peace, his love, and his joy. The Lord be with you. Yes, Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.